and today we're going to be talking about finances. And while I am not a financial guru, I am just a typical run-of-the-mill mom, and finances is a part of everyone's life, and it can really make or break your life. And while finances can be a very individual topic, I still believe it is essential to discuss for our well-being. It's extremely applicable to the life that we want to live for ourselves. What kind of life do you want to live? It honestly boils down to money. Money gets a bad rep sometimes because we don't want to take away from what we value or what's most important in our lives, like people or our relationships with a higher being. However, we do need money to pay for things for our own survival. How much or how little is truly dependent upon our lifestyle and what you're comfortable with. So let's get started, shall we? Creating a level 10 with your finances boils down to one thing, your budget. Your budget is your plan of action, the one and only thing you need to follow and stick to with consistency. So my first and biggest tip to get your finances in order is to create that budget. Making a list of yearly, monthly, and weekly expenses is key. And then updating it weekly, monthly, and yearly is my second tip. Without analyzing how you've done, you won't know how to make improvements. The best budget app that I tell everyone to use is the Every Dollar app. I don't do the subscription plan, but that of course could be totally up to you. I also created a monthly review sheet for my husband and I to sit down to do once a month to review. Have you, I used it consistently yet? Um, no, of course not. But that's why I say consistency is so important, even for myself. I know how to live a level 10 life, but that doesn't always mean I will be at a level 10 in every area of my life. Remember that finances are just like everything else in life. It takes planning, practicing with a plan, and following up to revise it. Because finances have been one of my main areas for needed growth and improvement, I'll tell you how debt truly began for us and me in particular. Probably within the first week of college, guess who was in the main lobby where we get our mail? Yep, it was a credit card recruiter. They know who to get. No credit, no problem. Don't worry, you need a credit card to build your credit, right? Well, of course, I fell for it. Now, I wasn't some big spender or anything, and I was working, paying for my car, insurance, food, and I just got my first cell phone. If that doesn't age me, I don't know what will. Anyway, I didn't realize I was going into debt, but I think the things that caused the most would be getting that card and slowly adding more than I could pay off student loans, which ha, I'm still paying for. But I also added two more degrees and then buy cars and owning more than what they were worth before either wrecking them or having to get a new one. But alas, all these things didn't result in me being homeless and left with nothing. I was still able to find a way to learn from my mistakes. And that's why reviewing your bu budget is important and making decisions with purposeful thought. It took many years to get into debt and many years to mostly get out of it. It's almost like one of those never ending battles and it comes super easy for some and less easy for others. So if I was going to go back in time and make one decision differently, and if I had someone I knew trusted and respected their opinion to tell me about investment, I would likely have done something totally different with my life and with my finances. However, my husband and I, the late learners we were, did eventually decide, hey, probably we should be investing in some things. He took business classes in college, so I tried to let him take the reins on this one. We started investments in Roth RA, deferred comp through our work, and college savings funds for our kids. While we don't invest like financial pros, a little will go a long way, and he's looking at being able to retire from his job at 48, and I will be able to retire from mine at 47. 
Now, retirement for us won't be completely stopping work, but we are hopeful it can slow us down and we can choose more wisely what we'd like to do with our time. What investment, uh, in, investment advice would you give? Who is someone you know or how could you find that person to help guide you? So remember how I said I'd make different investments early on? Well, retirement before 50 is great, but have you heard of other people doing it in their 30s? That's right. If I had heard of Mr. Money Mustache at a younger age, I might have just figured out the secret to never having to work again. Making money for 10 years and then living on all that through investments and savings so I can be with my kids full time as they grow up traveling the world. My biggest passions, if you haven't ever checked out Mr. Money, Mas My Mr. Money Mustache blog, that's where you should begin. Remember how I said it takes planning? Very few will start right out of high school with these techniques and you will make sacrifices. But in the end, could you imagine what you could do if money wasn't something you had to worry about getting up and earning every single day? And they say money doesn't buy happiness. Maybe not, but it just might in this case. One of my downfalls early on was not having that emergency fund in place. We needed new tires for the car. Credit card. We had a doctor's bill that wasn't covered. Credit card. We had Christmas come up and needed to buy gifts. Credit card. And for all those unplanned or oops surprises that you should be planning for, but didn't sneak up on you quick. So one of the first things we decided to add in budgeting using the every dollar app was adding to our emergency fund. Dave Ramsey recommends adding up to six months of your income in an emergency fund. And this is really important if you live off of contracts, self-employed, or in job positions that can be easily laid off when the economy is shifting around. He recommends starting with a $1,000 emergency fund, and this is the one I would use to focus on those little items that may pop up, and then resupply it as you can. And then work on the larger emergency fund for long term or even bigger costs like something medical that comes up or costs with a ton that insurance doesn't cover those costs. Even though my credit card history was not so inspiring, I really kind of needed the credit card to build my credit score. My biggest downfall was my lack of knowledge and planning with budgeting to be successful with it. While using credit card and paying it off each month to avoid the added interest rates is ideal, the other way to improve your credit score and what I should have chosen first with my lack of willpower was just simply paying the power and light bill each month. Now, all of that actually went into my husband in the beginning, and eventually I started to be part of those bills in my name as well. If you haven't learned anything from me yet, it's that consistency with your habits is the most important thing in absolutely any area of your life. So anytime you pay a bill on time and consistently, you are boosting that credit score. What to do even if you need a good, what do you even need a good credit score for? Well, to borrow more money. Kind of counterintuitive, don't you think? Borrow money to pay it off just so you can borrow even more money. Well, it's not likely you'll be able to save the full payment of a house and sometimes not even a car, although that is really ideal. You may not be able to get the house you want without building that credit score. So what do you think is a good mantra for your finances? I like telling myself, I am frugal. When you choose your purchases wisely, you're able to have more money later on. Things to me are not as important as the people in my life or the experiences that I may want to have. So I try to put my money where I value the most. I decided around the time my second child was born that we had overspent and we needed to live more frugally and embrace a minimalist mindset. I didn't buy a crib. I tried cloth diapers, which ended up not working out for us, but I was determined to start with living with less. I really got into tiny houses and we sold our house lived in a one bedroom cabin for eight or nine months while we built a small house. We downsized from five bedrooms to three and 2,600 square feet to 1,800 square feet. While it wasn't quite the downsize I wanted, it was a decision that I had to take others into consideration for. 
I've been continuously being aware of our overconsumption as a society. And while I'm not immune from wanting things, I do try to make it an intention to act with frugalness more and more consistently. What are some techniques that you use? In addition to trying to be more frugal, I decided the only other way to work on getting out of debt was also aiding us in retiring in our late 40s is to work on something that would create passive income, even if it's just eventually. Boy, oh boy, does that take courage. So passive income seems simple enough, but it's just creating something one time and allowing people to consume it over and over. Like this video, for instance or music, or books, or digital products. So I got busy trying to create some of these things. I even have two courses I've created that can help with this. However, nothing can be quite that simple because even if you make the most amazing things, and actually I think my stuff is pretty fantastic, it's not going to sell without marketing. And that's the tricky part that I'm obviously still in the learning process on. So if you want to make passive income, create something that people can purchase without it costing you and then market the crap out of it. And when you find the solution to that, let me know. I mean, I think I may have found it. So I'll let you know when it starts to work for me. Of all the lessons I've learned in my life, the one in my financial life I wish I had known was that finances need to be learned earlier. Finances were not talked about in my family. I had no idea how much things cost or how my parents made their paid their bills and the cost of how much our six person family was. I took personal finance in high school, but one class isn't going to make those ideas turn into habits. Do you remember what I said does? It's a plan a practice with that plan and reviewing and revising that plan and doing that over and over consistently. So why are we not also choosing to do this with our kids? Even if we don't have the money to pay them allowance, we could use fake money or beans or coins or stickers, keeping the same concept. I've watched videos of this family who gives her kids money twice a year to shop for their own clothes and once a month to buy their hygiene products. Simple techniques that happen regularly over time can help give our kids the idea of what things are worth and how to spend their money wisely. If you have kids, show how them how finances are part of their life. Teach them consistently about how you manage money and allow them to practice doing it too. Side hustles are becoming so popular. Most of the time it's because of the need to just have more income. It's also a little sad that our economy is doing so poorly that we can't make enough money with just one job alone and taking away from precious time with our family and friends to do what? Make more money? So roughly seven years ago when I knew I needed to make a real change with our finances and get serious about our debt, I need to make more money. And my mother had this business counseling children and she asked me to help with some as some of the other counselors were leaving. And my drive was going to be roughly 45 minutes to get there each day. So I wasn't sure if I really wanted to commit, but I eventually did. She was desperate and she said she pays for my gas money, which actually never happened, but it was also slow at first. And eventually it started to pick up and I became the main counselor. Anyway, with this new job, my husband and I were finally able to get out of most of our debt besides our house and save for traveling. But it made us jump into a new tax bracket and then out of nowhere, which seemed to us, we started owing more money for taxes. So after the first oh crap moment, we've been able to put back savings each month to pay for those taxes. And then we also look at other tax breaks like being an educator, looking into our field, or speak with your expert accountant to help you get the best tax breaks or advice for your situation. We never imagined that we'd have to think about us having an estate. When I think of an estate, I think of a large house with lots of land, but really your estate is your home and all of your assets. It's actually really important to leave your loved ones with something that can be easily managed and that takes planning. We have a financial advisor that helps us in this area and we've been able to get a lawyer and create a will. So our finances are going to be handled and taken care of in the manner that we request after our passing. When this is, isn't done, it leaves a mess for those left behind. 
As my husband and I age, we also consider our children and their successes or failures that they may have in their life. We want to plan our state for them to always have a home no matter what their life circumstances may hold. You never know when that moment will happen. So make that plan today. While I mostly guide people into physical, mental, and emotional wellness, financial wellness can be a part of that when you can achieve comfort in knowing your survival and loved one's survival is taken care of. You can increase your mental and emotional states too. Don't forget how important this part of your area of life can be for your health. These three tips are the most important to find that balance and peace of mind. One, make the budget and stick to it. Two, build your emergency fund. And three, invest wisely, making informed decisions through an ex. Sometimes we can have very little control over our bills once they are set. They are typically the same, but the one we have the most control over is our shopping. From groceries to appliances, furniture to clothes, these are the areas that we control a little bit more as we get used items, from used items to luxury. Your choices can make a big impact on your finances. And here are five tips to consider. First, use discount codes and coupons. I'm always looking for a discount code, especially for places like Shutterfly and Hobby Lobby. Number two, compare prices. We are usually always looking to see if we can get a cheaper deal on Amazon. And number three, shop for seasonal sales. When you when should you buy back to when should you buy clothes? Maybe when there's back to school sales? Buy generic brand. Consider the things that may be brand for long lasting effects and those that just don't really matter. And number five, avoid those impulse buys. I like to go shopping in my Amazon cart and if I haven't gone back in a week and still need it, then it gets deleted.